chapter. In particular, verses 6 through 8. Please note that the beginning of that 40th chapter of Isaiah has these words. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. The new revised version says, speak ye tenderly to Jerusalem. Verses 6 through 8. The voice said, Cry. And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flowers of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. Standing on the word. Third Sunday in the new year, and for a lot of us, things haven't gotten any better. And for some of us, things have gotten worse. We are caught in the trade winds, as it were. Caught in a downward spiral. All movement is either backwards or downwards, and there seems to be no comfortable words. There seems to be no tender voices expressing hope or joy or peace or love. Pick up the papers. Turn on the television. Turn on the Listen to your neighbors as they speak. I don't know if I have ever heard of a time that is any worse than this in terms of the anguish of the souls of people. There seems to be more than a malaise. There seems to be a nihilism that pervades every God says, speak comfortably to my people. Speak tenderly to my people who are besieged and battered and belittled and overcome by all kinds of circumstances. God wants you to know that in the midst of all of this, that he has a word for us. Now, he begins in the sixth verse and the seventh verse by telling us something that's alarming, that's, that's shocking, something that, that for a while I didn't understand. God says, we are grass. Some translations say we are as grass. But whether we are as grass or whether we are grass, the message basically is the same in terms of helping us to understand what we are because it goes on to say, and, and this doesn't sound like good news, it goes on to say that as grass withers. We are grass and grass withers. I wonder if that is God's way of saying we can't depend upon ourselves. I wonder if that is God's 
we think more highly of ourselves than we are. We have, in some instances, made it through school, and we have gotten good jobs, and, and things seem to be going right. But this text says to us, you had better know what you are, and you are nothing but grass. In other words, you are to provide sustenance You're nothing but grass. Grass is a sustaining source for something other than itself. Grass does not exist for itself. Grass wasn't made for itself. We are grass, and therefore we are to sustain the life of others.
just like grass, it withers. If you know what you are when it happens, you ain't gonna spend all your money trying to keep it from happening because you know it's gonna happen. You're gonna use that money for something else. You cannot prevent that which God has ordained and God has ordained us as grass. So we're temporal, we're temporary. We're not gonna be as strong forever as we are now. God has willed it so. In spite of all of the tender loving care, because we are temporal, we're gonna fade. Because we are temporal, we won't grow everywhere. We won't grow under all conditions. Conditions have to be right for us to grow, even spiritually. Some of us don't grow spiritually because the conditions are right. Uh, conditions are right. We don't put ourselves in the right environment for the sunlight of God to break into the soil of our lives so that the seeds of faith may germinate. You can't do it just on Sunday morning. 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 Better know what you are. You're grass. And you need to be nurtured. And you can't get enough. If you were willing to stay all day on Sunday, maybe you could get enough on Sunday. But if I stay up here another 10 minutes, somebody's going to start looking at the watch. Somebody's going to start saying, now he said he will preach fast. Hey, I know what I said, but I'm glad I'm not my own. I'm dependent on the power and on the spirit of Almighty God.
gale winds that blow, winds of unemployment, winds of frustration, winds of disobedient children, winds of unfaithful spouses, winds of, of Satan that tries to get at us. We're nothing but grass, and we're victimized.
on this altar today, Lord. We come, we give thanks, Lord, that we had ears to hear and hearts to receive your word. We come, Lord, because there are things that we need that you and only you can recognize. We come, Lord, because there are sickness in somebody, Lord, where the doctor has said that this is the end. And that there is no other recourse. But Lord, but we know that thou art a healer and that thou art a deliverer. And so, Lord, we come and we lean and we depend upon you. God, the year has just begun, and Lord, we're faced with so many problems. God, we come to your altar, Lord, because we know that we can find relief. That we know that your grace there will abide. And Lord, that even in our weakest state, that God, you're able and you provided that grace to give us that strength to carry us through. And Lord, we come because we want to leave all that we are carrying at this moment at the altar. God, it's been so heavy. It's been weighing us down. And Lord, we've turned to the left and we've turned to the right. And simply 